So in the last kick, um, I put five bike lengths on Eric, uh, and at that point, there's no there's no tactics. You're not sprinting. You're just trying to get up the last bit um, and squeeze every bit of energy out of yourself. Now the finish. <laughs> All right, uh, you have to do a Zapruder-like analysis uh, for for the final. Really, we're talking 10 meters. At 10 meters to go, I know that I've won the race, and then. And then I see a man crossing the street. Now, to be fair to this man, there's a lot of people who are hiking up there. It's not just like a bike race. It's not a closed environment. Um, and you know, he probably just had a tough workout, a long day. Uh, and we're up at kind of altitude, 6,000 feet or so. This guy somehow missed everyone with the cowbells and and the and the phones and the shouting and the cheering. And uh, and there's a you know an announcer. He he missed that and he just crossed the street directly in front of me. Um, I, I saw him coming and, and I hollered at him and he didn't even really stop, but he did hesitate half a step so that I was able to squeeze between him and the end of the road. But I very nearly lost the race in a pile right there. So that was a little adrenaline rush for me. Uh, I get through it and you can see me in the next second. You can see this clip that I'm shaking my head in frustration, but I'm through it. I'm through it, and here's the finish line. Here's the culmination of, of months of training, an altitude camp, uh, hotel rooms, rental car, airline tickets. I got the upgraded, never in my life have I upgraded my seat uh, on my own dime. I've been, flown, I've been flown business a couple times by generous sponsors. Uh, this time I bought the Delta Comfort Plus so I could stretch my legs out on the way here. Um, I'm, I'm getting older and I recognize that, so I sprung for that. All of this culminates in this moment. Here's the finish line. Here's, I get to have the photo, my fourth victory. So at the finish line, there's a little bit of a bump. That's your timing mat. Uh, that connects to a, a chip in the, in the seat post that, that's dangling back there. So my front wheel goes over that uh, and into the banner. Now the banner, it's not new. They've always had the banner. It's one of those things that I've, I've from every time I've won the race, I remember there being a like, oh man, that banner was kind of a close call. I remember thinking that several times, but at no point did it make sense uh, to, to mention it to the organizers. Um, I was fine, and then you very quickly forget about that. But there was always a moment of just like, oh shit, this banner might not be a great idea, and then I'm fine. On this year, I was not fine. I still don't have a clear answer of how the banner was supposed to work. Uh, I, I think that there's, a, that there's Velcro in the middle of it, and when you ride into it, you're supposed to break it. That explains why the, the people on both sides were pulling at it so hard. They were trying to use the force of me going into it to break it for that split second so that I could freely ride through. If it wasn't meant to break, I imagine that one of them was supposed to let go or both of them were supposed to let go and I was to ride a little further um, with the banner draped on me. Now that already would have been a problem because the banner as set was too low. What you want is the banner to be shoulder length. Well, really you don't want a banner at all. There's a reason that, that pro races don't have a finish banner. Uh, running races do. Bikes a little bit more precarious. Bikes are not perfectly balanced. In fact, if this bike wasn't leaning on a wall, if I just tried it, it would fall right over 100% of the time. Bicycles are inherently unstable that way. So the height that they had the banner held was at my handlebars, which is not ideal. If you look at it, they each had a one-two count to simply let go, and I believe that I would have saved it. But they didn't, and you can see the force that I ran into the banner actually lifted my rear wheel. It's as if I ran into a wall. Only a few seconds after, Eric crossed the line uh, and a very close finish. So me and I'm laying there, and, and the volunteers, or whoever's holding the banner, uh, immediately apologized. And in that situation, I'm obviously, I'm, I'm a lot of feelings. Uh, I'm, I'm in pain to begin with. I'm tired, I'm sore. Um, but my main thing, rule number 11, I don't want to be a dick. I, I, I run bike events. I know things happen. I know volunteers are volunteers. A volunteer should never be criticized. Um, I kind of just walked away. And, and I to the people, if they happen to watch this, uh, Shit happens. It's okay. I, 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 did, I do believe I fractured my wrist. Um, that's going to heal also. I don't have any real problems. It's a bike race. This is a thing that I signed up for. And here's my reminder that my suffering is, as always, uh, completely voluntary and not real suffering. There are people suffering in the world. Uh, please click below to my No Kid Hungry link. Every dollar they turn into 10 meals for kids who need it. Uh, this is an important time. Food insecurity is up in the United States. Uh, summer meal programs are critical. Uh, please have a donation. Make something good out of this. Thank you.